What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of CNC. This is episode number 71. We're starting season stop by seeing that Ben Davis just bruised his shoulder in our latest win over Bryce Nova. It's just a five day injury for the vet. And also for the first game of today's episode, man, it, it feels so good to like care about international games again in a FIFA career mode. First time in a long time. We've got the third qualifying game of our European Championship group at the Cardiff City Stadium against Ireland. So really, really excited for this one. Obviously to start the group off perfect start winning our first two games against Austria and then a big win in Spain where only seven of our fans turned up that was so hilarious man taking on Ireland at home looking forward to this one and hoping to make it three straight wins here against the Irish well three minutes in Adam Iden the Canary striker had a golden chance to make it 1-0 Price keeping the score scoreless for now and then from the corner another great save by the man with the samurai top knot you know I mentioned before Webb last season for the most part was our starting goalkeeper because Price is great Grove is just for some reason so slow but I do prefer him he's been our starting goalkeeper for club and country this season he made a couple of big saves there and from the following corner we go on a break Dan James rolls it through to Raby Matondo holds it up to Gavin Humphreys and what a lightning quick counter attack from Wales that was from one end of the pitch to the other so quickly taking advantage of the light hearted uh, light hearted light manned Irish back line there and David Brooks get well suited David Brooks of course makes it 1-0 and gives Gives us the lead, wrapping up that really quick counter-attack. So Wales in front, courtesy of a fast break. It's 1-0. And in this game, it was the corners, really, for both teams that were causing problems. A couple of great saves there by Gavin Mizuno, who kept it at 1-0 at the break. But we've been a better team in the game, despite Ireland having the fastest start. And with seven minutes to go, still up by a goal. Looking to wrap the points up. Humphreys one-on-one. -on -one. Oh dear, uh, I don't really know what happened there. Yeah, 90 overall, Gavin Humphreys now. Come on, mate, when you're 90 overall, you can't be missing those sort of chances to close and kill a game off. That was really bad. Somehow missed the target from there. Awful. But even so, it doesn't matter. Three straight wins, three straight 1-0s, and nine points on the board already. Spain off to a terrible start. I thought they'd be top of the group by now. But far from it, really bizarre how the uh, strongest nation in the group, or so you'd imagine, have got such a poor start. But even so, we're okay with how we're doing. 100% start for Wales, three straight 1-0 victories, and right now leading the way in the race to qualify in our European Championship group. And it feels so good again to care about the international games in a career mode. So following game, back to matters with the club. Aston Villa away at Villa Park. Great start in the Premier League as we know. Six wins in our first seven games are still undefeated. But heading to this game here against Steven Gerrard's Aston Villa, my goodness gracious me, fell behind very early on. And you know, there are just some grounds where you just don't ever seem to play your best football at. There are some cursed grounds in FIFA CM where you just can't seem to do well. Villa Park is one of those grounds, man. I rarely ever come to this ground and have an absolute Stormer. We were still trailing into the break, but an incredible through ball here fed through Dan James. His first touch was amazing, and the finish just as good. Right before the break, our number nine puts us back on level terms. What an assist, what a first touch, and what a finish as well. We find the equaliser right before the break. Three goals in eight for our number nine, and we do have the leveller. And in the second half, tried to get momentum on our side. We'd started the game off trailing, but I really went at Aston Villa early in the second half. Looking to get in front for the first time in the game. And after Curtis Jones, this is just by Ben Davis. Here. We win the ball back quickly. Quick little ball through to Gavin Humphreys. And whilst he missed a sitter against Ireland for the country, he was going to miss this one with the club. Sent through one on one. So you start with Dan James's goal. The first touch was so crucial there to get him away from the opposing defender and smack it in to the top corner as well. I think that's one thing I've noticed a lot, you know, since this year's FIFA has gone on. And as you know, patches throughout the years, they tweak and change things, EA. One thing. I noticed when I first started playing this year's FIFA was that the first touches on the original um, gameplay were really, really horrifically poor. I mean, they were terrible. The ball just rebounded off the boot like crazy, man. It was like the boots were made of cement, basically. The ball just smacked off them and went so far away from a player's control. But since the patches, the first touches are a lot better and you can use them to your you know, effect now when knocking the ball on, like I did there with Dan James and Humphreys, the two goals we scored. Much, much better, more realistic and a better way to utilise players who are good touches and good dribbling as well. Still, following game, could not wait for this one here. 
Glasgow Rangers away at Ibrox. I can't wait for the day that Ibrox and Celtic Park are in FIFA as real stadiums. But taking on Rangers away, match day three, Europa League group stage. And as we know, Alan Bound. We'd see Alan Bound again for the first time since we sent him here on loan. He was playing centre mid though. He was in midfield for Rangers in this game. God knows why. Unleash the bound guys. Play him up top. But even so, it was starting CM in this game. We hit the woodwork early for Rabi Matondo. But it wasn't Alan, but Mark Bound, his brother, who would open the scoring in this one, make it 1-0 away in the Scottish capital after Ethan and Padu went down as well. And then 31 minutes in, we would double the lead through that man, Rabi Matondo. Gets the ball out of his feet, chips it in to the far corner. Rangers 0, Newport County 2, and Matondo doubles our advantage just past the half an hour mark as well. I knew if we would win this game, nine points on the board, Rangers would be guaranteed to still only have the two. I, I, I sorry, one even. I felt very confident indeed in this game that if we could, uh, no, sorry, two, that we would, um, we would be able to qualify, you know, with a game or two to spare. And also, Dan James made it three right before the break. This is why, again, I wanted to pick strong lineups for the Europa League group. I didn't want to take any chances whatsoever against these three teams. No disrespect, but I did see us as the strongest side in the group. But I didn't want to take any chances. I, I wanted to get through this group as quickly as possible, avoid any kind of hiccups whatsoever. We were freeing it up at Ibrox, heading into the break, whilst Bakuna would give range the consolation goal and nine minutes after restart. That's all it proved to be. Final score at Ibrox, 3 1 Newport County. Allen Bound tied down in this game, couldn't really do much. And in the end, as you can see, halfway through the group, all three teams for last have two points each. No one's got a win so far, as KRC Genk and Applewell drew in match day three. So we're seven points clear of all three teams there. And my maths is really, really bad, as you know. But I do believe now just one win in our final three will guarantee a qualification as the three teams below us are seven points behind. So yeah, I think one win now in our final three guarantees qualification. I feel pretty confident after 100% start, we should be able to do that. Unfortunately, the bad news, as you would have seen, is that Ethan and Padu broke his toe. What is it about centre-backs in this team and getting long-term injuries? Joe Rodden's only just come back. Brandon Cooper is still down. And Alan Padu, who we signed in the summer window, is now done for three months. And we won't see him again until Christmas time at the very, very earliest. What is it about centre-halves in this side and getting those serious injuries, man? So frustrating. Thank God Joe Rodden is back. But even so, whilst we are training and Paddy to be as a holding mid in this team, as the long-term success for Ben Davis, he's been starting centre-back due to the injuries to Brandon Cooper and Joe Rodden. But now he's done until around the new year time. That's a really frustrating blow. We just can't keep our centre-backs fit in this team. Even though final game, obviously it's episode fourth and final one, Everton, who, as we know, just sacked Rafa Benitez. I think the right was on the wall quite a while ago, to be fair. Uh, taking us on to Rodney Parade in this game. And, you know, I mentioned earlier how there are certain, like, cursed grounds in FIBA CM where you never play well. Villa Park is one of those for me. Molyneux and Goodison Park, to be fair. Other grounds where I never really play my best football. Everton are a heck of a bogey team for me in FIFA CL. I mean, they've got some really good players. They've got some really good young talent. So it shouldn't be that much of a surprise that I struggle against them quite often. But there's just something about them. When, whenever I face them, I, I never feel confident. You know, we'd start the season off undefeated and on flames. And we've won every single game at Rodney Parade this season. But in this game, I was 3-0 down before half time. 3-0 down in South Wales at home to Everton. And I was thinking, there's something about, again, Everton, Aston Villa, Wolves as well. I just cannot seem to play well against them. And the Toffees were tearing me apart in this game. I was 3-0 down, 50 minutes in. I'll get a goal back through Dan James. I was thinking, do you know what? If I can't defend against these guys... I've just got to keep on scoring. James gets us a goal. It's 3-1. There's still plenty of time, but I just couldn't create any more chances after that. Everton were playing a really high press. Kept on putting me under pressure. And with 10 minutes to go, after Rafinha rounds his man, Masias gets away from four amber shirts and smacks it in to make it 4-1. So when I was talking about, you know, bogey teams and cursed grounds, Everton... Aston Villa, Wolves, all three of them. I just cannot stand facing these guys. Rafinha and Masias with braces each, absolutely battered. 
And let's just say I didn't see that coming. Had an undefeated start to the season, keeping pace with Liverpool, and an absolutely hammered 4-1 by Everton. Certain teams in FIFA, I just can't stand facing them. Everton are one of those sides. But that will end today's episode of CNC, guys. Massive thank you for watching. Really hope you have enjoyed. Please drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. And I will see you for the next episode of C and C very soon.